One of the biggest questions facing pretty much every classic video game now is if it holds up in the modern day. There are some games that are great for the time, but end up falling short for people who play them nowadays because so many gameplay elements within older games don't really feel good for most people playing games today. I've recently been on a quest with the goal of beating every Zelda game, and I recently decided it would be a good idea to go all the way back to the original, The Legend of Zelda. The reason for that entire long monologue in the beginning of the video is because The Legend of Zelda is a very old game, and so a lot of the elements within the game itself have to be judged with this in mind. It is also important for the video to talk about whether or not this game is actually worth playing anymore, or if you might as well ignore it. So with that, let's talk about The Legend of Zelda. When you first touch the game and move around, one of the first things you're going to do is die, and upon death, you're gonna be greeted with a death screen that seems standard, even for today, and the reason for that is because this was actually the first console to have a proper save function. I hear all about how Ocarina of Time changed the game with Z-locking and 3D graphics, I hear all the time about how Breath of the Wild revolutionized the Zelda series, but I only recently just found out that the original Zelda was one of the first games to ever have a save feature. Pretty cool. This is just one of the many examples showing you just how old this game is. Another less fortunate example of how old this game is would be the combat system. The reason you're gonna die right after loading up the game isn't because the combat system takes some getting used to, but it's because this game is ridiculously hard. The combat is very limiting, and there isn't much the player can do to switch it up. Most combat relies on getting really close to an enemy, trying to stab them, and hoping that they don't turn around to quickly destroy you. The problem is that it felt like I was just betting my life every time I attacked an enemy because there were times that the enemies could just turn around and attack me and Link isn't even fast enough to get away from them so you just kind of have to accept your fate and lose a third of your health. It doesn't help that the map is entirely open so the game doesn't even bother trying to balance the enemies and you could be fighting an enemy that does two hearts of damage while you only have three hearts. I remember there was this one time that I came across a Lionel in the middle of nowhere and it shot long range projectiles that killed me in three hits, maybe two, and a couple minutes later I came across a blue Lionel, who does even more damage. It sounds like this wouldn't be that much of a problem, but literally every single enemy in this game sucks to fight, bro. Even the easy enemies like the Octoroks become tiresome after a while because you end up spending your entire time trying to maneuver around and attack the enemy, only to get rewarded with nothing most of the time. I think the combat would have been a lot better if the enemies would actually consistently drop hearts or rupees. At least that would give the player an incentive to actually kill enemies in the overworld instead of running past all of them. Link in this game is very fragile and dies very quickly, so a lot of the time it's not even worth taking a fight with a regular enemy because of the risk of going from full health to death in zero and a half seconds. Whenever Link is at full health, he is able to send out projectiles with his sword, but unlike modern Zelda games where this is a small convenience, it's crucial in this game if you want to quickly cover enemies. The problem is that like I mentioned earlier, every enemy does way too much damage, so your ability to actually take advantage of this is ripped away from you from the moment you get hit. The odds of you recovering to full health after getting hit by a bunch of enemies are slim without a potion, so a potion is really your only option but they cost over 60 rupees each. Future Zelda games seem to improve on this by adding a bunch of pots and easy enemies everywhere which drop hearts and other stuff to aid the player, but unfortunately, I said future Zelda games, and we are talking about those. I really do dislike the combat system in this game, and I think that there are so many solutions that could improve it. The biggest problem and the most obvious issue is that the player doesn't really get any ranged options until later in the game, so everyone is forced to, to use this tiny stick as their weapon for the majority of the game. Even when you do get ranged weapons late in the game, they don't do nearly as much damage as the swords do, which means that your only reliable option, even later in the game, is fighting with this stick. It would be really cool to see the original Legend of Zelda game get a remake, perhaps with improved combat, because this was one of the biggest problems that I had with this game, and considering how much combat there is, it's a pretty important problem. Simple solutions like making enemies drop more hearts, giving the player longer range, making the enemies slower, all of these things could exponentially improve the combat, which is probably my biggest complaint with the game. 
For the most part, dungeons in the original Legend of Zelda are pretty much the same. They can be found all across the world, but the interior of the dungeons themselves aren't any different from one another. One of the more interesting qualities that separates this game from the other Zelda games is that in the dungeons you're able to get a surplus amount of keys in any dungeon you please, and you're able to bring those same keys inside of other dungeons, and you're still able to use them. This can make otherwise difficult areas within later dungeons completely skippable by using a key from earlier in the game, and honestly, this is pretty awesome. I mean, I'm not gonna pretend that it doesn't take away from the dungeons in very rare situations, but for the most part, I thought that being able to bring keys from dungeon to dungeon was a cool gameplay mechanic. I have no idea why they haven't tried implementing this in the modern day, but I hope that they find a way to do that eventually even though it probably won't happen. Another way to skip past most of the dungeon sections in this game is with bombs. Bombs can be used to blow up most walls and dungeons as long as there's a room on the other side of the wall. Bombs are surprisingly easy to get a lot of in this game, so one of the most effective methods I used to get around the dungeons quickly was just blowing up random walls and skipping segments of the dungeons. This whole bomb thing is a little bit more questionable than the whole keys thing since it feels like this was only implemented because of the fact that the dungeons were super confusing at times and this would give them an easy way out. Don't get me wrong, I love blowing stuff up both in real life and in the game, but I'm not entirely sure if this is the best solution to these difficult dungeons. Speaking of which, the dungeons in this game are very confusing, and I don't know how you would even be able to get through them without a guide or a week's worth of time. These dungeons are very difficult, which I'm sure you assumed by now considering the game, but even I was shocked by how hard these dungeons became. There were some dungeons where it felt like I was dying hundreds of times, oftentimes from the same annoying enemies like the whiz ropes. A lot of this is because the game expects you to explore every crevice of the overworld, world and obtain powerful gear and rupees there, but I was honestly a lot more interested in actually progressing through the game, which made these dungeons a lot more difficult, at least for me. Some of the bosses in these dungeons, like the boss for the fourth dungeon, are really dumb. A lot of the enemy encounters, including these bosses, are just artificially difficult, and it didn't make the game feel any better. There's a fine line between a difficult game and bad game design, and this game unfortunately falls into the second camp a lot of the time. You can have a difficult game, but I'm not going to believe you if you try to convince me that this is a well-designed boss fight, because it's, it's not. Look at a game like Mario The Lost Levels. This game is a perfect example of bad game design designed for the sake of difficulty. It's not like there are any difficult parkour jumps or interesting puzzle solving in the lost levels, they just throw a bunch of random difficult garbage in order to give the player a challenge, which isn't effective for creating a fun game. I'm not saying the original Legend of Zelda is on the same level of game design as the lost levels, but I am saying that the bosses are just as bad. One of the biggest problems with the dungeons is the ability to find them out of order, but this sort of thing is one of the biggest issues with the game itself. It's actually very smart when you think about it. You can't find anything out of order in this game because there is no order. Genius. Well, actually there is an intended order, this game just doesn't do anything to guide the player or give them any directions. You spawn in the world and the game says, okay, good luck, and you have to find all the dungeons and secrets without any dialogue or instruction. This is like throwing a kid into the woods, telling him he needs to hunt a bear to escape, not telling him how, and just driving off. Exploration in this game is very confusing, and this is one of those games where you absolutely need to do hours upon hours of trial and error to proceed unless you use a guide. I'm gonna be 100% transparent here, I totally used a walkthrough for this game. Who wouldn't? Every time I tried to progress through the game without a walkthrough, I was left not being able to do anything. All of the dungeons are in random spots, sometimes even being behind random hidden walls, and all of the bonus content you need to actually become strong enough to survive is hidden in really random areas throughout the surprisingly huge map. It's kind of funny to think about how many Zelda fans complain about Breath of the Wild supposedly giving the player too much freedom and not enough guidance when games like the original Legend of Zelda exist. I think that perfect exploration in a game is exploration where the player still has guidance and knowledge of where to go next, but is still able to explore and flesh out the world in the meantime. This game gives you zero instructions when it comes to where any of the dungeons are, which may not sound like a big deal, but it's massively detrimental to anybody who wants to go in without a guide. It isn't uncommon, especially for old games, to require a guide to actually understand 
understand what to do next, so you could say that this game is just a product of its time, but I still wish that there was some more guidance on where to explore next. Visually, this game is fine, I guess. There isn't that much to say about the art style of an 8-bit game on the NES, because they all honestly look the same. The original Legend of Zelda looks really bad when you compare it to future Zelda games with amazing art styles, but this is one of those cases where it really is a hardware issue and not a game issue. The music in The Legend of Zelda is similar to the art style, fine. The songs in this game are actually really good, especially the dungeon theme, but there are only like 11 real soundtracks within the game, so there isn't much to judge. The Legend of Zelda is a game with a lot of flaws which are to be expected considering the time it was made. The combat is annoying, the exploration is cumbersome, and the game basically requires a guide. But, despite all of those flaws, it isn't a game I would say you should avoid playing. I still enjoyed most of my time with this game, and I would recommend it to anybody who plans to play all of the Zelda games like I do. One of the benefits to these old games is that they really don't last for a long time. Zelda takes about 8 hours to beat, so even if your issues with the game are huge, they won't last for long enough to make you miserable. To answer the overarching question, is The Legend of Zelda dated? Yes.